Hello everyone, welcome to Jarkus Ranger Review. This time we're we'll looking at the 19th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Target Tower. And this one picks up right where rewriting history left off. The Rangers are reviewing the security footage of the stolen mega transporters, trying to find out what was happening and what they plan to do with them. That is, Blaze and Roxy want to do with them. But then Roxy's stasis pod starts making sounds, it turns out the life support systems are now starting to fail. So obviously Ravi is extremely freaked out and extremely worried. Because not even Nate knows what he can do to help, if anything. And Commander Shaw has to tell Ravi to focus on his mission. He has to focus on finding his transporters. Or everyone is, is gone. So the team heads out to start looking. Well, all except for Devin, because he is at his father's re-election rally. Even Ben and Betty are on the search. And they actually bump into a van that just happens to have the three transporters. As well as a bunch of tronics. What they were doing in the middle of a busy road, who knows. Obviously they can't fight them, so they run away. But they're getting chased and shot by lasers. Including showing up right at the rally. And everyone flees in terror. And this is right after Maya Daniels goes and says that true leaders take courageous action in times of danger. Just like the Power Rangers. I think I quoted his words almost verbatim right there. <laughs> so Devin runs out, out of sight while everyone is panicking. And his dad is just thinking, my own son, unbelievable. And so he helps an elderly man that gets stuck in the seats and can't really get up while everyone else has fled. And the rest of the team quickly joins the fight. After the Tronics are dealt with, Ben and Benny point them to where the van where the mega transporters are. And of course there are more Tronics, so the Rangers fight them off while Ravi just stays in the van and just starts driving it back to grid battle force. While still morphed as well. And Commander Shaw gets on a communicator and tells him that to don't stop for anything, just hurry back with those transporters. Of course, Avatar Roxy blocks his path, and she runs off to the side. So Ravi has to stop and think for a minute what he has to do. Does he want to take his one and only chance to save his girlfriend, or is he going to do his direct orders and take it back? And ultimately, he decides to go and face Roxy, the Avatar. And you can tell he's already extremely vicious. I mean, we know he gets that way when he overheats, but... This is even more so. He is out for blood from the very beginning. Like, he is relentless attacking her. And even uses his gorilla strength pretty early on. Even though it's starting to cause him to overheat. At this point, he's not thinking about his mission. He knows that this is personal. So eventually he defeats her by throwing a giant rock at her and then blasting her. And eventually when she explodes, there's this purple cloud around in her explosion. And yes, her existence is gone for good. I mean, he even breaks her morpher, so she can't have her transformed state. And he still continues to just beat on her until she's gone. And when it's finally over, he collapses on the grass, which just so happened to have sprinklers on them that cool him off so he don't go berserk. But just as he gets up, Avatar blazes inside the van and he drives off with it. It was all ruse, they played on his weakness. And at the same time that he's having his battle, the other rangers are fighting a Giga Drone, using the Striker Megazord and the... Uh, Racer Zord battle mode. And as always just takes and blasts at it from her Zord because that's all she can do. And it's eventually defeated by the Striker Zord grappling with it, holding it in place. And then Devin finishing it off with his regular Hyper Strike. Evox is actually extremely angry that Roxy was defeated. Because she was his, one of his strongest lieutenants and now she's gone. The only one loyal to him now is Blaze. Now Blaze seems very serious and very forceful that he can definitely fulfill his mission even though Roxy is gone. Well, that's because he's having a little bit of emotional feedback from losing his partner or something else. But he's definitely not backing down to Evox's frustration. He's talking like he can definitely do this. Now, back at Grid Battle Force, Ravi is with Roxy's pod. Even though the Avatar is gone, she's still not waking up. And her face is all red and broken out. She does not look well at all. But he does not have a whole lot of time to wallow in his despair. Because Commander Shaw drags him out and gets on his ass because he defied a direct order and he put everyone in Coral Harbor in danger, including Roxy, and perhaps the entire world. So yeah, he feels like crap for his mess up, as he should. And after she's done being too serious with him, she does get a little softer and tells her that she really likes Roxy. So yeah, I like that. We got to see both sides of her. Both her military commanding side as well as the side of her that really is a caring mother. I mean, we've seen bits and pieces of these two, like, mixed together, but this is the first time I believe we've actually seen them be separated from the way she's talking. Like, before when Ravi was injured, she just says, my boy's tough, thanks for bringing him back, and then she went back to her mission. This time it's in reverse. 
she was in total control of the situation and telling Ravi off for what he did. And then spoke to him like a mother who knows what he had intended. Because that sure as hell would not be an easy decision for anyone to make. After this, Ben and Betty again proved themselves to be competent because they found one of the transporters. It was found outside, near, and Morphex Tower. And it turns out if all three of them pointed at it and activated it, it can take that tower to the cyber dimension. Where Evox will obtain a ton of power. And just so you know, while they're out in the open, Devin's father sees him and confronts him about what he's been up to for all of this past time. As far as he knows, he just ran off in the middle of a crisis and didn't help anybody. Never answered any of his calls. He's always out late, coming up bruised like he's been fighting. It's like he don't even know his own son anymore. Now, there's a growing trend I've seen in several episodes lately is that the conversation gets interrupted by another attack. This time it's ablaze with a bunch of Tronics. Now, he orders Devin to run home. Obviously, Devin just runs out of his sight and goes to proceed to battle. Meanwhile, our good mayor actually grabs a shovel and tries to fight a little bit. It doesn't get him very far, but it helps get civilians to safety. And so he overhears the rangers talking a little about getting those transporters to be not activated. But eventually he gets thrown off to the side onto his back. And even Ben and Betty drop the transport into a shopping cart that was left at the scene and try running off with it. Except Blaze teleports in front of him and just takes it back. Obviously they can't fight against him. It was a good effort guys. You were not made a fool of. You actually did a good job. Now Blaze activates two of the three, but Devin interrupts him from hitting the last one. Basically the two of them are fighting over it, trying to either get rid of it or to destroy it or turn it on, depending who it is. And then Blaze is able to get the upper hand by binding Devin in some cables, and then shocking him to the point where he demorphs. And yes, Mayor Daniels does see him, and he is in complete shock. His son is the Red Ranger. Unfortunately, this didn't make it like Time Force with Wes and his dad, where it was an extreme dramatic moment. But no, something else happens here. All the transporters get activated, and the mayor runs forward to try and help his son. But instead, both the Morphex Tower and the Red Ranger get teleported to the Cyber Dimension. So just as soon as his father made the revelation that his son is a lot better a person than he thinks he was being, he doesn't get the chance to acknowledge that. Now back at Grid Battle Force, Nate says he's going to have to rebuild a cyber gate for them to go into the cyber dimension and attack Evox on his home territory. They have no other choice at this point because the enemy has both one of them, the enemy has both one of their own captured as well as their own power source in their hands. They need to put a stop to that at all costs before it's too late. And then the real Roxy wakes up. But no, it is no time for a reunion, not just because of the crisis, but because she could see everything that the clone, not the clone, the avatar of Roxy was doing. And she reveals that Scrozzle has built a new robot body for Evox that can be fully powered by this Morvex tower that was stolen. And with it, he can take over the entire Morphin grid. And if he has access to that kind of power, there's nothing in the universe that can stop him. And now we're to be continued. Now I gotta say, this is a great episode. We have not had in forever a real episode where Devin's character arc is put into perspective. In fact, I don't think we've had a single one the whole second half of the season. It's a shame too, I would have liked to see a lot more involved with this, the relationship between him and his father. I mean, they interacted with a couple episodes early in the season and then nothing. After that, Devin was pretty much a pretty competent leader. In fact, the only time he had a conflict of anything was when the Fury Cells were infecting him and when he was mad at Zoe for lying to him, but that was it. And both of those were resolved pretty quickly. Devin's not a bad Red Ranger at all, and the dynamic between him and his father has shown off really well. It's just that we don't see enough of it to build up to this point. I felt like that part was a little bit rushed in this episode. But who knows, they might dedicate some time to this in the next one, and we get to see the mayor's emotion development. Because you've already seen it, he can be really casual and down to earth and a good dad, but also extremely strict and serious when he has to be. Not unlike Commander Shaw, except in this case, he does not know the truth of anything going on. Now as for the action, the action was really great. I mean, we had a bunch of stuff going down in the streets. I mean, Tronics and regular citizens getting involved, and even Ben and Betty thrown into the fray and actually being competent. I mean, yeah, when you're first looking for the transporters, they are bumbling around, bumping into things. But that was it. At this point, everything is reaching their worst moment, so we're going to hit the climax of the season in the next episode. And I definitely want to see it. This is definitely an A-rank episode. The action was good on all accounts, and the writing was really on par. 
it brings up several conflicts. One involving Ravi bringing his character full circle, where he tried to separate himself from Roxy to be a ranger. And now he's using his abilities as a ranger to save Roxy. And not being as strict of the rules, he is following his own decision, his own path. Even though it turned out to be a little disastrous. And we're finally seeing an event to force Ravi and his father to finally connect and find out what is really going on between each other. Something I've been wanting to see since early on in the season, and I'm glad it's finally going to happen now. So no doubt the mayor is going to be one of the big heroes in the finale. That's going to be great. So there's a lot to look for into the final battle with Evox, and I can't wait to see it. So what do you guys think? Do you think this was a little rushed? Was it not that impressive? Or do you think it did a great job at preparing us to deal with the final confrontation? Why don't you let me know in the comments below. And until then, I'll see you for episode 20. This has been Jarkus. Thanks for watching. And let the power protect you.